What's going on guys? Bladezilla here and today we're taking a look at a special one from Sher Goroff and RJ Martin. So it is a collaboration piece, special edition piece that uh, was recently released of 100 items or 100 pieces of this. And we are lucky enough to take a, take a look at one of them here. So um, before we go into details on this, I just want to remind you this is uh, just a casual conversation. We're taking a look at a knife like we're in a coffee shop. I'll go over some of the details, show you the knife, but it's not uh, by any means a super technical detailed breakdown or analysis. We're just talking like we are hanging out. Also a reminder that uh, a lot of the items featured on this channel are available on my website, which is bladezilla.ca. And if you haven't been there before, I highly suggest you check it out or at least add your email to the, to the list to be notified when we launch stuff. Um, here's the website, just a quick shout out, there you go. I uh, added a couple pieces the other night, some Shiro's, some reconnaissance stuff. Lots of good stuff on the website, but uh, that is available now. So definitely check it out for more information. But into the good stuff, as we always like to do. Uh, enough of the dry stuff. Let's talk about this cool knife. So. I believe this one is called the Molten Overkill. And if you remember back in, I want to say early, earlier in the year, maybe Jan, Feb, March 2023, Shiro put out a custom Molten Overkill, um, which, you know, sometimes they show you these pieces and, and you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if they're going to do anything with it. And, um, you know, they kind of did something with it, which is cool. And it's not identical, but it's similar enough. Um, if you guys remember as well, we have the Russian Overkill, the RQ36, and a Soft Overkill in the same kind of collaboration family. And uh, each one of those three have their own kind of following. People love them. And it's just kind of cool to see, uh, you know, another edition. So a fourth piece. Um, I will say this particular one is unique in that it is Magna Cut. So... Um, this is a first, as far as I'm aware, for sure, Goroff to do Magna Cut. And hopefully, the, you can see that there, it's written on the blade. We'll show it, my, uh, I'm sure, all over the place, because I'm sure we'll be sitting here for half an hour. Uh, apologies in advance. But, um, let's go on, let's do some measurements, let's do some weights. I don't have a spec sheet for this one in front of me, so we're just kind of going to have to wing this. Here we go. Ooh. So, first impression. It absolutely fires out of there, like, incredibly well. Um, really, really surprised, actually, at how... Uh, the RQ36 itself was very... Like, the detent was tuned. Uh, it's a heavier detent on this, I'll say, or at least this one is. And uh, it's a lot thinner of a knife overall. Uh, let's take a look. So specs-wise, overall, we're about 9 inches. That's what she said. And blade length, we are at about four inches, maybe a hair less, three and three quarters, three and seven eighths, somewhere in there, depending on how you want to measure it. But there is your tape measure if you want to take a peek. In terms of sizing, you know what, let's do a couple non-standard knives to start. Um, lately I've been doing a lot of Shirogorov size comparisons, and... Uh, I keep going away from my standard, so let's let's get a couple of kind of standard knives and uh, take a look here. So we're going to start off with the bug out. Now this bug out is a user, as you can kind of see, and I'll show you the angles as I always do. So there's the bottom of the knife, and we'll move it up to the top. So it's going to change size perspective on it, obviously, but a bug out very similar to a neon, great knife, great size. Um, I use mine all the time, as you can obviously tell. My para two, I don't know where the heck that thing went, so we're just going to go ahead and not do a para two. Um, we're going to do the neon and the shiro line. So we're going to start neon and kind of work our way up to the top here. Let's make some room. So neon on the bottom. We're going to do my stellar in the middle, if I can get the sky to fit without anything touching. This right here is exactly why my videos are far too long. And, uh, is there enough room to kind of just shimmy that down just a little bit? And then we'll do the 111, which seems...
seems to be going like hotcakes lately, these 111s. I don't know what that's about. Super cool knife. Super big. It's a little sword. But there's kind of your uh, Neon Stellar, I guess you could say your F95, so to speak, size. I'll, I'll throw an F95 in here just for perspective. And then your 111. And I'll throw a F95 on top just because you're probably going to want to see it. It is a little bit of a different size. Remember, it is uh, a collab, so it's a, based on an R.J. Martin design. Super, super cool. But uh, it, it's very much similar size. It's just a bit of a taller handle, I'd say. One of my favorites, for sure. So there's that. We're going to take these guys off, nice and slow, just to prolong the video length. And actually kind of show you a couple ones in the series here that I'm fortunate enough to have. I don't think I've featured them on the channel before. We have the Russian Overkill. Which is very similar to this knife in a lot of ways. And then we have the world famous RQ36. Whew. How good does that look in a line, eh? My three favorite, uh, you know, they, I don't have a soft overkill. Um, in fact, I've never had a soft overkill. Um, just not a real big fan of the, the style of it. I know it's the thickest of the four now. But um, from this perspective, these are by far my favorite. And it's a cool little sequence going from one to the next. So um, in terms of, you know, if the Russian overkill had a baby with the RQ36, you get the Molten Overkill. And then you add Magna Cut on top, and I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to be the highest demand special edition collab to date in this line. Um, because it's the first time in, in, from what I know, that they've used Magna Cut. So blade shape wise, all that stuff, it's right there, very similar, but from a uh, blade steel, I think this one's M398, the RQ36 is S110V, and then Magna Cut on the Molten Overkill. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking about these two, I would think. So I might keep this one kind of just off to the side, but hopefully it's not in frame, I can't really see. <laughs> But this is what we're going to take a look at today. So I, I am super stoked, super pumped on this one. Um, I just think this is one of the coolest additions they've done to date. And there's a lot of little details here that we're going to kind of go over. So hopefully you can, you know, get a hot coffee going. And uh, you're excited to listen to the, the purr of the Jaguar's breath, which is me. Just kidding. For the love of God. Mute me. Look at it. I don't care. So let's get into this one. So we've talked about the uh, the overall size of it. I don't have a weight, but I will because of uh, this beautiful scale here. We are going to get a weight. So let's get this guy weighed up. Any guesses? Five ounces? It feels pretty heavy. It's got to be five. Survey says, oh, I should zero this thing first. 4.3. Are you kidding me? I'm not even close, hey? Um, and in grams, if you guys do want to see that, 124. And just out of curiosity, let's do the Russian Overkill. 134. And the RQ36. Feels lighter. 139. I am just not even close, hey? What is going on with me today? It's like, oh yeah, it feels heavier, it feels lighter. Not, not either. So 124. And then 4.4 ounces. Which, I'm very surprised at the weight of this. Given how solid it feels. Because it doesn't feel, it feels like a 5 ounce knife. So, that's pretty cool. It's actually super, super cool. So, what do we have here? Well, for the inlays, we've obviously got a carbon fiber. Of some kind. I don't know what the technical term is. Uh, carbo tie or something like that. I, I, I don't know. It's machined very, very well. 
Now, my first question without looking inside this is, are we going to see the carbon on the inside or is it added to the outside? And as I roll, you should be able to answer that question, I would hope. But because I've been wrong so much today, we're obviously going to look at this guy on the inside. Try to. It is a frame lock knife where the Russian overkill is obviously that's where it gets that from as we can see here and the RQ36 is not so there's the lock side of this guy it's a frame lock I've yet to do a video on this I know it's just one of those things that I keep putting off um, because I just don't seem to uh, ever catch up as these new knives are coming out, I definitely want to continue to put them on the website, but I just uh, only putting two full-length videos out a week. I uh, I just they're in queue; they'll they'll eventually get there. But you can kind of see there's the back sides, which looks great. So maybe I'll keep that up here as well. So a couple things. So we've got obviously that beautiful beautiful frame lock with all this micro milling the camera can pick up on that but it's all even inside the bend on the lock bar which is beautiful absolutely stunning and you know the first thing that I thought of when I saw this was is it you know what's the width of this thing is it fat is it thin what's the blade thickness that kind of stuff I don't have those specs and I don't actually have calipers it's in my uh, that's that's in my 2024 plan is to get some calipers so I can actually tell you measurements but then I'll probably mess that up be like oh my god this thing is so thin and then it's like five and a half mils on the blade stock like oh man this is a nice thick uh, thick one and it's like 1.8 <laughs> um, anyway so we've got excellent milling all in the back here which looks terrific it's the same style clip I believe on all three which is just stunning very very useful we've got on the side of the clip it is leaning on the lock bar, it's, or uh, sorry, it's not leaning on the lock bar, it's leaning on the frame. So that, uh, you know what, when you hold this in your hand, it's not going to put pressure on the lock bar. Which is beautiful. It's uh, every man's dream to have that. The milling is just, it's very different, like, I might be crazy. But is this milling not... Does this milling not look better than on the other ones? Am I crazy? Oh, it just looks so good. Are they doing that on there? Yeah, they are. They're milling on the. They're milling right up. Cool. Um, as we kind of go down the front of the knife here, we obviously see that RJM logo. RJ Martin, which looks great. No concerns there, obviously. That's just a good look. Beautiful, beautiful. You see the, the the grind. It's almost like a belt grind, kind of horizontally on the top of the blade. God, that snaps right out. And I've got some fingerprints on here, as always. So I'll try to get this off. You know, these uh, these new these new ones are always so sensitive to any any finger oils but you're seeing a couple different kind of finishes to this guy so you're seeing kind of like a satin finish on the flat grind I believe it's flat and then you're kind of seeing that almost like a side belt I don't know what you call it but it's got a, a grain to it which is nice on that RJM side which is the flats it's kind of got a nice semi polish I'd say looks good and on the other side, we've got a Shira Goroff logo, if it wants to focus. Which is not just... It's not just put onto the blade with, uh, like, like it's not just etched on. It's actually... Uh, let's go in here a little bit. It's actually, like, engraved right in, so that if you wear, the, wear that off, you're, you're going to see that forever. It's quite deep on the blade. Maybe I should show it this way so I don't cut myself. Reminder, I'm wrapped around a tripod when I do these videos, and I don't have the best coordination, because I'm trying to balance a number of things, focal points, lighting stuff. It's just it's a lot of work. And I have to talk. Can you guys believe that? 
Um, in hand, oh, I can't get over that snap. Ooh, it sounds like a shotgun coming out. The detent is definitely stiffer than on the RQ36, which was a little light for my liking. It shoots out. Oh my god, I don't know if I can even fail this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put as little pressure on this as I can here. Oh, yeah, you're not going to fail that. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful detent. I'm a big fan of that. Um, anyway, in hand, very similar to the rest. It just holds you and it just wraps into your palm like a glove. The inlay climbs a little bit higher than the uh, ROK, the Russian Overkill. It definitely fills your palm a little nicer. The flipper tab fully, fully holds your hand in there. That's a very deep finger hole there, in my opinion. And just locks like you put this in your hand, you're gonna. It, it feels like you're holding. A, feels like you're holding a gun. It's beautiful. The jimping on the blade obviously goes uh, right from the handle on both sides. Climbs up the blade. The spacing on that as well. To me, without miking them, they look the same, which is a nice touch. Which is a little bit different than the back spacer. I always talk about how. The jimping in the backspacer, it seems like they're trying to match them lately, but not in this case. It's a little bit different on the backspacer, more kind of in line with some of their other models. But beautiful, nice thick hardware as well. Very practical in how on the blade, as you can see, the handle follows right up to where your finger falls onto it and just locks you in there. Like you're not even, you don't even need jimping. You're going to hold that and just you find it beautiful. Then as we go down the blade itself, very flat, and then spreads out at the tip to provide some additional strength at the tip there, which is nice. So if you did want to choke up and go down the blade, you can. And conversely, on this little hump here, it's also nice to kind of hold in that spot. That's a real nice little feature. I never really realized I liked that so much. You're cutting and then get into the fine stuff just to kind of drag it the, the other way. It's nice. Now, the backspacer itself nestles well into your palm, and you know that's what provides you grip against the inside of your palm, right? So it definitely provides some grip, which is nice. Could you wear this with gloves? Absolutely. But uh, because of the width of this, I think you're going to really like it in your hand without any gloves on. It's quite nice very good feel to it and I've got another fingers width of room on the tip of the handle absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful um, it is running on their single row roller bearings now if we are unfamiliar with that um, we are going to talk about that so I always say on their production models they've done single row bearings which is a standard bearing in a track in a circle they have their multi-row bearings which is standard bearings in a pinwheel pattern on a in a track three in a row or two in a row on the neon one and a half mil balls typically and that is like the rays of a sun so kind of off in a in a ray fashion so one two three one two three in a straight line kind of at a curved angle that provides some additional stability to the blade compared to single row. And then once we step up from there, you go into the custom divisions or the full customs, they, they tend to use roller bearings. And roller bearings are, it's a needle bearing, so it's, it's like a hot dog instead of a ball. So in this case, I haven't, I'm not gonna open this up and look, but um, you'll have a certain number of rollers in a row, like 12, 13, 14, 15, I can't remember the magic number, but it'll be in a, in a row perfectly perpendicular as well so it's uh, very very smooth controlled and once you break them in oh my god it gives you a feel unlike anything you're gonna ever experience in a knife it's just incredibly smooth incredibly controlled and they just float home and when I say float home I mean when you're dropping that blade you can pause it anywhere it'll hold but with like a little bit of a bloop, it just goes so easily, like zero. 
um, zero force to, to move it. It's just crazy. Um, if you've never experienced roller bearings, you can often experience them on some of these special edition collab pieces. And uh, that is a blessing and a curse because once you experience them, you immediately want them. Which is uh, not the best feeling when all of a sudden your production knife is already, you know, thousand dollars, twelve hundred bucks, and now it's twenty five hundred bucks. So <laughs> apologies in advance, but um, you know, as always, if you don't want it, you're not you're not gonna miss out. The production pieces are terrific. It's just the roller bearings are a next level. And there are ways to get roller bearings on production pieces, obviously. Um, outside of going to special editions and, and customs and, and whatnot. So there are ways to do that. If you don't know, send me a message and I'll uh, point you in the right direction. Now, carrying on with my OCD, looking at these. So we can kind of see this... I don't know what they'd call it, but it's... Uh, I would... It's kind of a rounded micro-milling pattern that almost looks like like sound waves or fingerprints, if that makes sense. So kind of like an echoey sound wave pattern that moves uh, through the knife, which is beautiful. Just beautiful. And then up top, that pattern changes to a vertical line of micro-milling that goes left to right, obviously, down the length of the handle. And then as we transition between the inlays with the micro-milling, we round off the edges here. Hopefully you can see that. So we round the edges off, which is just nice in the palm to go away from kind of vertical milling and a nice bevel. Beautiful. Now looking at this, you're going to ask me, why didn't they move that spacer all the way into that gap? That's a good question. And it's one that when I looked at this, I immediately remembered, I'm like, are they all like that? Yep, they are. RQ36, there you go, same gap on the backspacer. Russian Overkill, same gap on the backspacer. It's just what they do. There's probably a purpose for it. I don't know what it is. I'm also not that concerned about it. Uh, some might say it looks less finished. I really, uh, you know what, most people wouldn't even notice it unless you point it out. Backspacer looks gorgeous, tons of work in that. It is color matched to the clip as well. Keep that in mind, it's basic though, right? Whereas on the, the Russian Overkill, it's I think blue. So you kind of get that blue backspacer, and then on the clip, you get a blue clip. Whereas this one, it's kind of just a more of a stonewashed kind of cool tie color, and then it matches the clip. This is just such an under uh, under the radar, beautiful piece, in my opinion. Now, all the inlays as well, I, I would assume, are going to be unique. There's a hundred, and uh, unfortunately I don't have a number of them to compare, but I would imagine this pattern would be unique. It's not a stamped carbon setup, so they're all going to look a little different. So it might, you might see some cool patterns there, depending. But this one, in the light, you move around, you change. Just look how much it's changing when I'm moving this around as is, okay? It never looks the same. And that is kind of cool, because now you're you're in a knife that's made to be a standard folding, uh, sorry, just looking at the focal point here. It's cool that you you get carbon inlay, so you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. One, getting that beautiful lock that is uh, right present, made of titanium. Everyone loves the full tie stuff, but now you're getting that uniqueness of carbon fiber in there without it having to be a liner lock, which is typically, other than maybe the Hattie, what they do, right? Because on the RQ, you get that beautiful, beautiful kind of pattern to the knife, right? Looks unique, all this stuff, but that's not it's still in liner lock, right? And I like liner locks. Some people prefer these. A lot of people do. Mostly lefties. But um, it's just different. I like I like full-time models, but this is a nice touch of carbon to kind of break up the monotony of a full-tie model. 
which is cool. It is thin, and compared to the Russian Overkill, without looking at it, it might be... I'm thinking that blade's thinner. I'm thinking this is a thinner knife, but then you add in the inlays, so it probably balances things out. What do you guys think? Does one look thinner than the other? I don't know, I can't tell. Just eyeballing it, I think this one's the thinnest of the three. The RQ36 blade stock, let's take a look at that. Oh, it might be the same, whatever this one is, just based on my eyeball here. I think it's the same blade stock as this guy. It looks almost identical. So, there you go. Which is cool. We obviously have that captive pivot system in here. Which means that this guy, when you pull it off, there should be a ball bearing underneath it so that it can't rotate around, so that it's always going to be in that direction, which is beautiful. We've got a... God, that thing fires out good. We've got a lock bar insert, I believe. Can I see one in there? Yeah, we do. Jeez, like, my God, look, there's, like, this, the bottom of the screw. <laughs> yes, we have a metal lock bar insert in there. And uh, it's not, remember, it's not just to provide wearability and replaceability if you did decide to use a piece like this daily and wear it out over a number of years. It, uh, it also tunes the material between the titanium and the magna cut, in this case, to provide uh, less stiction or um, lock stick on that frame lock, which is pretty important. Now if I roll this knife you should see, I think, yeah, it's it sticks up a little bit as well, the lock bar. So I'll show what I'm talking about here. See what I'm saying, how the lock sticks up a little bit from the side? So that's ergonomically a great way to um, get your finger in there and feel it. Yeah. So that when you're holding the knife, you can you know disengage it very easily, comfortably. It's got a nice bevel to it. Some micro milling in there as well. Just terrific. Oh my god, this is just nuts. Look at all this milling work around that pivot. How good that looks. Unbelievable. The, the, the tolerances here are just next level. Like, there is not another brand doing these tolerances on this blade and this quantity out there. These, are, uh, these guys are setting the bar. Now, as I said before, we're going to grab that little light and it's not going to balance, is it? Uh, it might not hold it anyway. Uh, I'll grab my little light. I want to take a peek inside here to see if I'm seeing any carbon fiber in there. How it's anchored. Um, I think I do see some carbon on this right here, on this side. So, aside from opening this and trying to show it, you do see through in, it looks like, a couple spots. One on that, and do we see on the other side? I think you do on the other side. Yeah, you do. Above the, uh, I think right up here, you see inside. Which is not a big deal, obviously. But hopefully you can see in. I can't see what the camera's seeing right now. Hopefully you can get a glimpse. But you see a little bit of carbon, not much, a tiny little window, which is kind of cool. I'd love to see what one of these looks like opened up. I see a ton of weight reduction inside the handle here. It's already super thin to begin with. But uh, inside, it's all milled out, micro milled, beautiful, beautiful weight reductions. Yet they kind of keep like a trapezoidal pattern to it to kind of add strength and aid in stiffness. Beautiful. Nice work. And then on the back, this is another thing, guys. Like This is what I'm talking about when I say next level. So obviously, it's a sheer grow off. It's going to be centered. Okay? But, when I say centered, they're, you know, Shiro's like, hey guys, you know what, I know I, my customers want it centered. I know they want it to be beautiful and all this stuff, but why, what can we do to put in here to really add emphasis to these tolerances. I know, why don't we build into the back spacer something that shows that if this blade is off center by any margin, it will not only highlight it, but the knife won't work. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then they put that in there. 
Which is just nuts. Like, just nuts. Tolerances here are just next level, and I'll have to take a look at the uh, the flipper tab, how much room there is in the top of the handle. I've talked about this before, on kind of how they're squishing the top of the uh, two frame sides together. And uh, tolerances are just unbelievable up there. And uh, I just want to see here. Yeah, same kind of gap on the bottom here as the others. Same kind of thing. Beautiful, beautiful knife. And then as I said earlier, you've got Magna Cut in the house. So Magna Cut on the tip, written on the blade. And they did write it in a different spot. If you remember, I think the rock, I think they wrote it up a little further back on this part. Let's double check. So here we go. Come on guys, focus. I wish I could just touch the screen right now with my nose. <laughs> there we go. So Magna Cut obviously is written on the left and then the rock on the right here. It is not stamped on the blade there. It is further up. Right, see it? Just right there. The light's starting to hit it. So M398, just on the tip there. Um, I like how they do it here because not only do you see it from here, but you also see it when the knife is open inside, right down there. See what I'm saying? You look down, you see it kind of both angles, which is a nice little uh, Easter egg. I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I was talking about the flipper. Let's see what kind of tolerances we're working with. No, there's nothing in the way. I was thinking that they had something in there, but no, they don't. Oof. This is an incredible piece. I, uh, I I don't know what the market demand is going to be for these. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say I don't know. I know what it's going to be, and it's going to be through the roof. You know, 100 pieces, um, it's going to be nuts. Are we, do we have any writing on serialized numbers on the inside of this, on the tip? They usually write it down here. I do want to see that. Uh, where's my little light here? Where's my little light? Let's take a look inside. Yes, so this guy is number 54, and it is just in the bottom right here. Come on, man, you're killing me. Just in the bottom. How close can I get without freaking the camera out? It's really hard to see, but it's written inside there. Just right here. Oop. And it says 54 slash 100. Which is a nice little touch. I love that. I love details like that. Because it makes you, when you spend that kind of dough on a knife like this, um, I'm assuming right away on the secondary you're probably 2500 to 3000 the next day. Um, it's nice to get a numbered piece. Because I think the original rocks, were they 100 or were they 200? Let's take a look here. My Russian Overkill collab. On the handle here, what do we got? Let's see, 82? 82 out of 200. There you go. So 200 on the rocks, and I think the RQ36s, these guys were 100. Yeah, 100. It's the soft overkills. I think they were 300, which is why their value is a little lower. But when they start doing these hundreds, the value just... You know, I, I really think this is going to be a museum piece because it is the first knife Shirogorov has done in Magna Cut, other than the Astrum full custom. So I think I think this guy is going to be a, you know what? It's a tie framed Magna Cut Shirogorov with carbon inlays, the first they've done ever. Why wouldn't this thing be worth? You know, it's, it's going to be a flippable DIC. I can almost guarantee you that if you keep it mint. Um, if we go further back down the handle, I didn't even address this. We obviously have a lanyard hole. If you do want to carry it, of course, gives you the option, which I, which I like having the option. I'm not a big lanyard guy myself, but if you do want to, then um, you could certainly put one in there. It's drilled right through both sides, not just one. As we've started to see um, on some of the other Shiro's, We've kind of gone away from the drill hole through 
and gone more towards the backspacer style where we put a little spot here and you can kind of incognitoly drill or uh, thread your lanyard through that and you know from the side it still looks good but from the top it's still functional so there's that and then on some of the other ones they're just doing a single side uh, drill through on the frame when they're avoiding the backspacer so you're seeing that and then on the stellar as I mentioned earlier that's a complete drill through on the corner there so uh, you're getting a little bit of everything well actually you're not getting a little bit of everything you're getting a hole through it which looks fine and it's functional and on a model like this I think it works very well I don't have any problems with it at all in any any in any in any way so now I am curious if that B tent is tunable at all because my this is stiff Ooh. I would have to be I would be curious Just looking inside yeah maybe who knows probably not it's a great great feeling blade man this is uh this one's going in my collection full stop full hold um i could see how you get this one and it replaces the other three because you kind of get all of them in one i really do i'm not just saying that like it's it's that good um as we have seen obviously we have some proprietary hardware here and uh you know I, I don't know why you'd want to open this thing up but you can you'll need a custom bit tool mainly for this right here that's called their reverse reverse bit which um I, I don't have one with me accessible but all it is is just uh, think of a flat head reversed so the middle is a hole instead of a, a peak wraps around that and uh you, you need that to open this knife up now the other bit here is their standard flat bit, which you could get away with, obviously like a screwdriver, but please don't do that on this knife. You're going to mar it up and um, that'll decrease the value of it on a knife that's going to hold very good value. Now the clip is attached internally and I'm trying to see which bit they used on the inside of that for the clip. I can't really see how that's attached. How is that thing attached? Am I blind? That's a good question. I can't tell how that's attached in there because we've got no no clip on this side or no bolt on this side, nothing hiding underneath it. But when you go inside of it, normally you'd see a bolt there, a bolt head. And I don't see one. So it must be built into somehow into that backspacer. I don't know how they do that. And quite frankly, I'm not going to be the one that opens this up. And just looking at it now, I love this. Uh, you can actually see some light on each side of the backspacer. It's kind of floating in a, in a sense. So I'm going to hammer this light underneath here. Hopefully you can see. See what I'm saying? There you go. See how there's some light on both sides of the backspacer? How cool of a detail is that? Things you don't even notice. God, the tolerances are just nuts. Oh, that's a cool angle never looked at it like that that's uh that's definite ig worthy right there so that's cool god these things never cease to amaze me this is what i'm talking about with sure go off like put one on your desk at work put one beside you in the office and you find yourself looking at it constantly and you'll you'll pick up on a new detail on it where you'll be like i've been looking at this thing for 40 hours a week company time right and how is it that I never noticed that and you'll see little things like that where you just go my god there's gap along the backspacer and it's perfect absolutely perfect like right now I'm looking down at this clip and you see milling around the outside of it on the clip along the edges it's not on the top on this on this part here it's not on the top it's on the sides around it. You're seeing milling lines. Micro, micro milling lines right here. 
okay? And then along the top and the back. It's all micro milled. And it's like, these are details, they don't have to do this at all, but they do. And they do it so well, and it's just incredible. And, and guys, like, I know I started this channel, I know that I, I, I flipped some of these pieces, but I can honestly tell you, my, my goal of Bladezilla here was to share the love of my favorite knife brand originally, because I couldn't get these in Canada. And uh, I, I just, I really want to share the love and show these, like, you look at the milling on this, on the back side. This is another detail I'm just looking at now. Do you guys see the milling? It goes from ultra fine from here on this end and kind of gradually gets less fine towards the clip. Machines don't like to do, to do that. That's a programmed in, like, I don't know how you do that. But it, it you do notice it. And it's details like that. You just go like, my goodness. Someone's really thinking about this stuff and making it, you know, you're, you're breaking the flow of a knife from perfectly, you know, organized patterns. Oh, it's on this side too. Like, look, the milling. Super, super micro, and it gets a little bit fatter on that end between each line. See what I'm saying? Very subtle, but noticeable when you're looking at it. So you're taking like a, a perfectly, you know, uh, a perfect balance of a knife, right? And you're breaking it up with carbon fiber. You're, you're perfectly breaking up the lines. And it does it so well. Gosh, what an incredible blade. Well, this has been a special time for me to look at this knife. It's uh, my favorite in the series by far for the uh, the overkills or the uh, RJMs, by far. Oh, the micro milling on the side of this frickin' inlay. You guys seen this? This is just nuts. This knife is not going anywhere. This is mine. So, love it. Magna Cut, first time. Roller bearings. It's the best of all of the uh, other three RJMs kind of squished into one and then throw a Magna Cut on top of that. Are you freaking kidding me? This is lights out the best of them, of the four now. By a line landslide. Oh, and that Magna Cut logo. That's so cool. What a nice little feature to see, both the top and the bottom when it's closed and open. Just incredible. I'm stoked, man. I, I'm sorry if I'm if I'm sounding too excited because I am very very excited about this one. It's. Oh, I am absolutely stoked on this one. Okay, well that is the Molten Overkill from Sheer Goroff and RJ Martin. Special edition collab. I'm probably over 40 minutes now. Sorry about that, guys. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you. And you're uh, you're the real MVPs. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And uh, and I'll hit, I'll, you know, re like, reply, all that stuff like I always do. And uh, until next time, I guess we will catch you around. But thanks for stopping by. I honestly really appreciate you and wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. So really appreciate you as always. Okay. Have yourselves a good week and we will see you on, uh, I think this one's going to be early in the week. So we'll see you on Thursday. Okay. See ya.